We're joined today by Ben Diaz-Clegg, a senior financial analyst. He's here to discuss some of the findings in AM Best recent global reinsurance report as it relates to the sub-Sahara African region market. Ben, what are some of the key drivers in the sub-Sahara African region's reinsurance market? Thanks a lot, John. So the last five years have been fairly tricky for for the region's reinsurance market. Um, Incumbents have had to grapple with uh, a plethora of different factors, such as uh, volatility in global oil prices, uh, double-digit inflation, uh, the, dev- the devastating impact of the, the COVID-19 pandemic, and, and, and ultimately uh, these factors have, have put pressure on the results of, of the region's reinsurers. Now, despite the general reopening of the global economy through 2021, the, the region is now battling the secondary effects of, of the Ukraine conflict. The IMF, for example, has revised its medium-term inflation expectations both globally and in sub-Saharan Africa upwards, while real GDP growth expectations have been tempered. And both of these factors could could ultimately impact real terms uh, top-line growth, uh, while at the same time driving up claims inflation in in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, another angle that we can look at is is around the social impact that prolonged economic turbulence can have. And this is particularly uh, significant in in a region, sub-Saharan Africa, that suffers from disproportionately higher levels of poverty and and income inequality. Over the last couple of years, for example, we've seen an uptick in social unrest events impacting uh, the reinsurance market in for example, in, in 2021, the, the arrest of former South African President Jacob Zuma led to rioting and, and, and looting in some of, of the country's major cities. And it's estimated that this unrest led to an industry loss of, of more than $2 billion. And, and ultimately, that will have landed on, on the plates of, of the reinsurers. Uh, the report speaks to the significant growth potential for this region. Can you take us through some of those factors? Sure. So, so notwithstanding those, those near term economic challenges that I previously mentioned, we, we believe that the region still has huge growth potential. So many of its countries have significant untapped reserves of natural resources, um, comparatively low GDP per capita. And, and, and this is mainly if we were to compare that against Western economies and generally low levels of insurance penetration. And ultimately, this means that the scope for, for rapid, rapid economic growth is significant. And, and we think that in turn, this would benefit the, the, the reinsurance market. So, Ben, how do the results of the region's reinsurers compare with their global counterparts? So if we were to look at the last decade, sub-Saharan Africa domiciled reinsurers have reported loss ratios that are comparatively lower and less volatile than their global counterparts. And in part, this can be explained by the generally lower catastrophe risk in the region. In addition, protectionist uh, regimes in, in the region's largest insurance markets also serve to, to reduce competition and to retain premiums on the continent. And this can vary from mandatory sessions of treaty business to a handful of, of national reinsurers. Um, all the way to to what I call local content rules. And and what I mean by this is legislation uh, that that effectively stipulates that local capacity must be exhausted before cedents can look internationally for for reinsurance. Now, the flip side of the coin when when assessing underwriting performance, namely the expense ratio, is, is slightly different. The typically high cost of doing business in sub-Saharan Africa with the generally small scale of local reinsurers tends to temper underwriting results, as many are unable to realize the economies of scale that global counterparts can achieve. How would you characterize the region's reinsurance capacity? I think in general terms, the, the amount of capacity offered by African domiciled reinsurers tends to be insufficient to meet the needs of local primary markets fully. And, and this is particularly evident when it comes to big ticket property and energy risks. In fact, we, we, we think that growth in the region's insurance needs has outpaced the buildup of local capacity. 
And to put this numerically, uh, the, the level of retention of AM best rated sub-Saharan Africa reinsurers has steadily declined in, in all but two of the last 10 years. Uh, falling from around 90% in 2012 down, down to about 80% in 2021. And often we, we find that, that, that regional players, uh, partner with, with, with global reinsurers that, that can provide support both in terms of underwriting expertise as well as capacity for those larger, more complex risks that I mentioned earlier. Um, that I would say that, 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 that this has evolved over time and, and it's clear particularly in recent years, that, that, that the market has become increasingly uh, more sophisticated. Uh, the balance sheets of some incumbents have steadily been growing, and, and, and some companies uh, have been successfully growing profitably in the facultative space, which would indicate that that, that reliance on external underwriting support in, in, in certain cases uh, has been reducing. Ben, so glad you could join us today. Thanks a lot. Our senior financial analyst, Ben Diaz Clegg, you can find the full report online at ambest.com. For AMBest TV, I'm John Weber.